What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, we're going to talk about, that's right, Fallout London. War. War never changes. Since the dawn of man, when tribes beat each other to death over necessities, the will to power has been the driving force of mankind. When the great fires of humanity's ambition ravaged the earth, it was not our doing. For the bloodiest chapter of human history had only begun. Britain was not spared the hellfire. And London, a monument to mankind's ambition, was returned to the state of nature. Those who emerged from the ashes did so from a network of underground bunkers known as Pindar stations. And so it was that the embers of civilization would ignite once again. Over a century later, through the military might of the Tommies, an aristocratic parliament continues to give orders. But few are still listening. In the Tower Hamlets, the fifth column rises. Training drums beat and uniforms march, all in the name of their dear leader. Eve Varney. Across the Thames, in the pastures of Richmond, a great army gathers strength. Styled on the Camelot Knights of days past, they're headed once more unto the breach. For there are whispers of angels beneath this hallowed land, a curtain of illusion and intrigue, a puppeteer behind the scene. Only one thing is certain. Those who take the road to Westminster will be forever changed. Because in mankind's pursuit of power, there is no price too high, no life too valuable, and no ideal too sacred. Because war War never changes. This was a difficult video for me to make because I'll be perfectly honest. It didn't capture my interest whatsoever. I bought a, a Fallout 4 and GOG, you know, the game of the year, got all, you know, had all the DSC, all that stuff, downloaded the high texture pack, of course, and, uh, you know, started playing Fallout London. I didn't play Fallout uh, London through Steam because... I didn't want to even deal with all the hassle. I just threw 15 bucks on GOG and played that way. That being said, I will put a link in the comment section on how to install it in both places. You probably already know by now, but I just want my video to be thorough. So I will be posting in the comments a link that to a link on how to install these. You already know, but just in case, like I said, I want to be thorough in my video. I'm also going to put a timestamp and have the Fallout London credits at the end. So you can click that, pause through it, and uh, see everyone in the credits. Every, and give credit basically to everyone who participated in this project. Give credit to the modders. I should say developers because they did a really good job and put a lot of effort and many, many months into this project, right? So like I said, you already know, you can already see the credits, but I'm going to include it anyway just to pay my respects and to have as much information and be informative in this video as possible, right? Okay, let me start off by saying, okay, this is a mod. It had no official, really technically, but that's the support. They didn't even coordinate with the mod team for the Fallout 4 next gen update. In my opinion, this was a complete disaster for Bethesda. And that, I mean, they had money just sitting there and they gave it up. But uh, Phil Spencer, Todd Howard, saw money sitting on the ground. That project was Fallout London. They decided to step on it instead of picking it up. This game could have probably generated them millions of dollars. It probably would have sold one to three million copies if it became an official release. If they hired these people and, and put them on a, a development team, you know. Uh, they could also hire these people and put them in a development team for other Bethesda projects to make sure that stuff actually gets done. Because as we know in my other video, I've mentioned this, 
Bethesda's biggest problem is that they don't have enough developers, right? So let me start off by saying I want to give as much praise as possible to the modders. This is the best mod that anyone has ever done for a Bethesda game since Daggerfall Unity. Now, if you don't know, Daggerfall Unity basically took Daggerfall from being a DOS game and put the entire thing into a un into the Unity engine. Once it was migrated into the Unity engine, it was it has been able to be modded to up the wazoo. You there are so many mods for Daggerfall now, and it makes it an actual playable experience. You know, in the 2000s or 2020s, I should say, you can actually play Daggerfall now. And it's so modernized, you could actually get through it. Whereas before, the DOS version was a little too dated. You couldn't really get through the DOS version. I've played Daggerfall for probably 200 hours. The Unity engine works. It works great for that. So in my opinion, this is the most, this is the biggest mod and best mod since Daggerfall Unity. There was also this mod for Skyrim where you go to Ancient Rome. That's also a really amazing big mod too. And of course, there's Sky Oblivion which that's going to take a while. We're all waiting for that. And a side note, this could be a lesson for Bethesda to stop messing around with an Oblivion remake when they are a development team already working on Sky Oblivion. You know, work with this team on Sky Oblivion, give them resources, hire them. And Bethesda, basically, they have a chance not to make the same mistake with Sky Oblivion, okay? Please, don't make the same mistake, Phil Spencer. You're in charge. Don't make the same mistake. All right. Now, this is going to make a lot of people mad. Okay. And like I said, I want to, I started off first. I want to give credit. Okay. This mod is basically, it's a 10 out of 10 because they had no official support. They had no, you know, monetary budget given to them by anyone who had support. It was all voluntarily done. So that, th keep that in mind that this mod is a 10 out of 10 because of the work put into it. They did an amazing job. So this mod, I want to say, it's incredible. When you, it's incredible when you analyze it, you know, all things being equal. So basically it's incredible when you take into all the external factors into consideration, it's incredible. Now, what I'm going to do that's going to make people mad is I'm going to actually compare it to a legitimate standalone Fallout game, and people are not going to like that. I think that Fallout creators in the community are giving this too much praise because they're looking at it from they're looking at it from an accomplishment point of view rather than an actual game. But I don't think it's fair to say this is the next Fallout game. I don't feel like this is even a Fallout game. The fact that it's set in London just doesn't translate. For me personally, I just can't resonate with it. All of the all of the Americana that gives Fallout its DNA, not all of it is gone, but most of it is gone. You know, some of the changes are actually better than the main game, and some of the some of the lack of Americana is a detriment to the game. They did a good job of replacing it with, you know, British imperial culture as much as possible because, you know, before World War II, Brit Brit Britain did have a nationalist more approach to things. Uh, so we could start off with that. Now, the game itself performs poorly. That may or may not be that that is probably like I said, that's probably not that's not their fault. But it, if you judge the game on its merits, it doesn't perform very well well. It crashed on me as soon as I got to uh, the, the, the station. The first train I took crashed on me. Instantly. Right. After that, I didn't even want to play anymore because it, it just wasn't interesting. The story wasn't compelling enough. It felt really shallow from uh, just the on-site, the, the perspective that I have. The technical things are... I'll start with the character creator. The character creator is really bad. It is uh, not as fleshed out as Fallout 4. And the hair colors are essentially added in as uh, pickup items, which I can understand because you want more things to collect. You want hairstyles to actually be meaningful. So I get where they were going with that. I get why they chose to do that. It could have also been a limitation of the modding. 
but it's 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 not very good. You know, the character creators that we've had have been used in games for decades and decades and decades. You know, it's like inventing the wheel. You don't need to reinvent the wheel and make hairstyles locked behind uh, pickups or uh, unlocks. So you can't, from what I could tell, I couldn't adjust the color of the hair. You had to pick the presets. The way you go about picking the character and moving the dot, you know, wherever on the face that you want to change didn't really work out that well. It was a little bit messy. So right off the bat, I really didn't like the character creator. After that, you were, you were introduced to, you know, the voice acting and their version of the, the Vault Boy, which is completely different. And this is where it starts it starts taking a turn from being Fallout to being a Fallout-like game. And in my opinion, because of these changes, it's not actually a Fallout game. It's a, it's a Fallout-like game, like a Souls-like game. This is a Fallout-like game, if you want to judge it as a game. The vault, the vault boy is, uh, you know, the vault tech boy is completely replaced. They use, um, I guess these, these figures that are inspired by the, uh, you know, the subway system of Britain. I don't know exactly where the, you know, these animations and things are inspired from, but it's completely different. It's not vault tech. It, it's, um, they don't, it doesn't really feel right. You know, it just doesn't feel like fallout. The animations are cool. The sound effects are very good. But it just doesn't feel like, right? It doesn't feel like Fallout. This I wouldn't say this is a Fallout game. It's a Fallout-like game. That is going to make people mad. You break out, you know, you, you're breaking out of the glass. I like the way it starts. And I want to compliment the voice actor. The voice acting in this is really, really good. Trust everything is going well. Tremendously so. In fact... It may be our best work yet. Good. The subject looks ready for conditioning. Within a week or so, we can wrap up phase one. And the dialogue is pretty decent, but it gets boring very quickly. It's a little too, uh, I don't want to say simplistic, but it's a little too straightforward. It's a little too scripted. So it's a, it's a good story, but it feels mostly scripted. And like I said, I'm not comparing this to New Vegas Fallout 3 or Fallout 4. I'm just judging it on its own merits. Okay, that's why it, this is a little bit more critical than it should be. Like I said, it's a 10 out of 10. This is the critical part of it. And I know people aren't going to like this, okay? But I have to say the truth, what I, what I feel. And to me, that's how I feel about it. So the dialogue was a little simplistic. It was a little annoying. I did like the British aspect of it, the British culture of it, because they are using, you know, European English and a lot of words are a little bit different. Their speech is a little bit different. So you get to experience another culture, which is cool in the Fallout universe. It also adds a lot of lore to the game, an extended universe, so to speak, that Bethesda hasn't put in the actual game because we don't know anything about the other continents or the other side of things. So it would be cool if Bethesda came out and canonized this, you know, this story. If they canonized it, that would be great. It The game does deserve to be canon, to be honest, like story-wise. So we have the British elements. The items are, are rendered very well. They did a good job with the assets. There, there are a lot of new assets completely from scratch. There are a lot of items and things like that thought, that are unique to Britain that you wouldn't see in the U.S., You'll see teapots. You'll see uh, there's there's different things besides stim packs. There, you know, there's British versions of everything. I can't remember all of the changes, but there are a lot. And I'm sure you could read a list or watch another video where they go in depth on all the differences. But there are a lot of differences in the items. They did a good job with that. They did a good job. There isn't there isn't a pit boy, but it's more like a uh, a utility belt. They do show the pit boy. And I'm guessing they migrated the engine into this, um, this like, uh, it's like a PDA, like a, a personal digital assistant or a tablet, but it's, it's thicker. It's like a, it's like a tablet mixed in with a Walkman. Okay. And you put it on your belt and you have like this utility belt. That's really cool. The design of that is pretty nice because we all know that just having, we all know just having the Pip-Boy on your arm is not very convenient. 
So it does make sense that, you know, you would evolve or advance the technology and put it, put it on a belt so you could just pick it up, you know, like a tablet, you pick it up and you're like, boom, boom, boom on that. That makes more sense. I really like that part. And that does remind me that the animations are really good. They did a good job with the animations. I would say that's one of the things that might be better than the vanilla Fallout 4 experience in Fallout 76 is that they put a lot of effort into the animations. And what I mean by that is like the fingers are animated really well. The way you move is animated really well. The uh, physical attacks are animated really well. The reloading, the unloading, and uh, pretty much everything you do is animated really well. The characters move very fluidly. So that's one thing they might have an edge over on the original game. Just like any Fallout game that we've seen recently, the graphics are terrible. And that's not their fault. But like I said, I'm judging this independently. Okay, so from now on going forward, I won't mention it again, but you'll you'll just know what I mean. The graphics are really, really poor. The new the new creatures don't interact very well with the environment. They have these rats. They they don't really interact very well. Their hitboxes are very weird. You can't tell if they're actually attacking you or not. And obviously that's not much different than Fallout 3, of course, but you know. It is what it is. The good things are they added some new type of NPCs. They added some new type of mutations. They added new things and kind of had their own thing instead of super mutants, you know, and, and did their own thing with the, with the British stuff, but it doesn't really resonate. And I have to be honest, I didn't play through the whole thing. I didn't want to play through the whole thing. And I was going to try to force myself to get through the whole thing, but just to make the video, just to make the content. And I was, I was, um, you know, battling with this all weekend because i was like well I, I i was like i need to force myself to play this so i could get all of the footage get everything that I, I wanted to do and fully flesh out the game so i could give a proper review but i didn't want to i didn't want to play this all the way through it didn't engage with me it didn't resonate with me at all as soon as it crashed that was it i was done with it and this is going to make a lot of people mad. I get it. But this, to me, this is not a Fallout game. It is a Fallout-like game. And I'm sure if you live a, in a different country, you probably appreciate it more. Because it's a, it's a foreign, like, Americana is also foreign to you. So you're looking at it from, a, you know, like a third-party perspective. I love Britain. I love the UK. All that good stuff, you know. Uh, but it just doesn't resonate and a lot of things are just too different. It's too different for me to call a Fallout game. And I think this is one of the reasons why Todd said Fallout would always be in the United States or US and Canada, because it just doesn't work as an actual Fallout game anywhere else. To me, it works, but it, it, it's not. It doesn't feel like a Fallout game. It's very hard for me to say these things because, like I said, the, you know, the modders did such a good job. But I have to be honest, man, I can't I, I, I think the praise that this this mod is getting is just. It's over the top, you know, like we can recognize it's an amazing mod. It's really good, but I wouldn't call this Fallout 5. I wouldn't say this is equal to like New Vegas, you know, nor should you expect it to be, obviously, because they had got no official backing. That's Bethesda's fault. That The fact that this game had to release the way it did, that's not their fault. That's Bethesda's fault. But the bottom line is that those things are still there. I didn't like that about it. And obviously, the regular Fallout crashes, New Vegas crashes. There's no way to play it without crashing. So that's nothing new to Fallout. That's not their fault. But it is part of the standalone process of evaluating things. And it just, nothing about this game, like, pulled me in. Some of the writing and dialogue is better. So the animations are better. Some of the items are uh, more interesting than the regular game. Some of the voice acting is uh, more polished or on par. The fonts, the fonts need work as well, but the fonts and the other Fallout are also terrible. So again, that's like a Fallout thing, of course. Any problem that you would have with Fallout 4, you would have with this. Or any problems you would have with the Fallout franchise and Bethesda's creation engine, you would have with this. So it has all those same flaws. Obviously, it's going to because it's an extension of that. 
Not like Fallout 76. I like Fallout 4, New Vegas, Fallout 3, Tactics, all that good stuff. But this just isn't it for me. And maybe that's just a me problem. Maybe that's just a me thing. Maybe it's just personal taste. So that's the video. And that's my dissenting opinion. That's going to make a lot of people angry. But we should all have an opinion and all have a voice. That's the only reason I'm putting this video out is to give my perspective and say, hey, look, there are people out there that aren't compelled to play play this mod, even though it's great in a 10 out of 10. It's not really Fallout. It's Fallout-like. That's my opinion. This is the video. Again, I will have a tribute to the modders. I will have links to, to all of the, the positive articles and reviews about this in the video. So this will have a lot of positivity in the comments and it will have positivity injected into it because I really don't want to put out rage bait, negative videos. Those videos get the most views, to be honest with you. Anytime I put out a negative video, it gets a couple of thousand views. I pull out a positive video, it gets no views. So I don't want this video to be that. I don't want to do that with my channel. But at the same time, I got to be honest, didn't compel me. I wasn't compelled to play this. That's the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.